our conference room. And anyone is welcome to come pray for those. We also have a nursery available, newborn uh, and through pre-K. Um, we have many great Bible studies going on right now. Tuesday night at 7 is the Book of Acts with Buzz Burney. Wednesday night's women's Bible study led by Pastor Marcella will not meet this Wednesday, but will meet next Wednesday. Dale Vanderhoof's uh, Wednesday night is taking a couple of weeks off. He will be starting back up on February 16th with the study on creation apologetics, meaning it equips you with the biblical worldview to counter the secular worldview that is all around us. There's also a men's brown bag study Thursdays during lunch with Buzz Bernie. And there's more information um, at the Welcome Center on all of these Bible studies. And Mark Ball is leading a study right now in the book of Revelation during Sunday school. And you can join that class Sunday mornings at 9 um, right here in that room. So uh, that is at 9 o'clock. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you are ready to take the next step of obedience with publicly proclaiming your faith, we will be having a baptism service next Sunday, February 6th, during church service. If you would like to be baptized, please contact Pastor Troy or Pastor Marcella or the church office. I hope you have a great week. Hello and good morning and welcome to Heartland. Uh, if you all would stand, uh, I'll lead you in prayer right before we, uh, we do our worship music. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, bless the church and congregation, everyone here today. Um, pray that uh, you open everyone's hearts here today. Uh, pray you bless uh, Troy and his message. Um, Pray that uh, you'll steal our show here today, and uh, we'll just give all this glory to you. Uh, bless us, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
Lord of the King, rise among us and let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise upon us and let it rise oh, let it rise oh, let it rise
broken dreams and wasted years until the past had disappeared. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus, all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it out for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. There ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus and let my jesus change your life hallelujah that much about me let me tell you about my jesus well, he makes a way where there ain't no way rises up from an empty grave there ain't no sinner that he can't save let me tell you about my jesus his love is strong and his grace is free the good news is i know that he for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus and let my jesus change your life hallelujah 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 amen amen hallelujah Hey 
must have wondered at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. Father, we ask you to come and fill this place with your glory. Father, may the train of your robe fill this temple, God. Father, we ask that you come in revelation and in truth. Father, I ask that you open our ears, that may we hear what the Spirit is saying today. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and we adore you. these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. Where is God? We see him in the splendor of a sunset. We sense his glory on the mountaintop. We know he is enthroned in the heavenlies. But these are not his only dwelling places. He is also found in the fiery furnace, in the belly of a whale, in the lion's den in the prison cell, on stormy seas. He is there in the dark watches of the night. He is at rock bottom. He is there at the end of the rope, even in the valley of the shadow of death. Where is God? He dwells in the place where you need him most. Amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, amen. Come on, a little bit louder, amen. Hey, when the enemy tries to run us off, you stand strong and you hold the ground that God give you to stand on. You take authority through the blood of the Lamb. Children's Church, you may be dismissed. I'm sorry. If you got young ones here, you're welcome to send them to the back. I know they're going to teach and have some fun. So I encourage you to do that. It was a big group today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord says that the floodgates are opening up. 
that the floodgates are opening up and I'm going to pour out my spirit in those last days on all flesh. That wasn't just for Peter and Paul. That wasn't just for the disciples. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, according to Acts. Are you ready to have his spirit poured out on you? Are you ready to be a difference maker because God has filled you with his very presence? Are you ready? Because the floodgates are about to open. They're about to open. Do you receive it? Scripture says greater things will we do when Jesus sent the advocate, the helper, the holy one to guide and direct you in all things. Remember that we serve a talking God with a talking book. And if you're not in the book, you're not going to hear him talking. You got to open the book. You got to receive the word that God has for you each and every day. And then he really starts to speak. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus, his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I want to tell you about the song, tell you about my Jesus, that he loves you so much. You, you should just be enthrottled and enraptured with his love that you can't even hardly stand before his presence. I, I was walking the prayer trail this morning and, and I was just talking to God and I was like, Lord, I, I know you talk to me through scripture and I know you talk to me spiritually and physically and Lord, I, I want to be like Moses and hear your very voice. But then I said I wouldn't be able to stand, God, if I heard your very voice. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to stand in your presence, God. Make me worthy. We serve a God that Romans said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody needs to hear that today. God hasn't given up on you. He's just getting started on you. He's just getting started. Buzz, you've been with God a long time, but he's just getting started with you, my friend. Every day, you take a little bit more work than others, Buzz. <laughs> Buzz is fun to pick on because I know he doesn't get mad. He can take it. He's got big shoulders, but he knows Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, I, I just thank you today. I just thank you, Jesus, every moment that you came and you lived and you died for us and you conquered death and you rolled the stone away. And so, Father God, make me a clean vessel that you can use today. Open the eyes and ears of your people today, God. And, oh, Holy Spirit, you are most welcome here. You are most welcome here. So send your spirit, God, that we might hear from you, that we might honor you, God. In your name I pray. Amen. We serve a big God. What have you asked him today to show you success? I was talking a while back with someone and they gave us this word. And, and when Abraham sent his servant to, to find a wife for Isaac, he, he was praying on that road before he was walking. And he said, Lord, show me success. Show me success that I, that I might find my master's son, the perfect wife. Show me success. You guys, we serve a God who wants to give you good gifts. He, first of all, wants to give you success in his presence. If you ask the Jesus into your heart, when you ask him into your life, the Holy Spirit comes in and makes, God makes himself known through the power of the Holy Spirit. Have you asked him for the power of the Holy Spirit that he would show you success in that? Have you asked him for success in your workplace? Have you asked him for success in your marriage? Yes, in your marriage, men. Love your wives well. Love them with a kind heart. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Ask God for 
for in those moments each and every day to step out and sh show you success in the things that he wants you to do. And I'm not just talking prosperity. I'm talking about your health. Show me success in my health, God. Show me success in what you would have me to do today. Oh, Holy Spirit, lead me in the phone calls you want me to make. See, sometimes we get too busy with the things of the world and, and we start to do all our duties and all these things that, that God has for us to do or we think that he's telling us to do, but we really haven't stopped and prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to lead us. Hey, God, what do you want me to do today? And show me success. Do you want me to get in the boat and go to the other side? Who's on the other side that, that needs to hear a word from the Lord at work today? We need to learn to get up in the morning and, and take our authority in Jesus Christ. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Revelations 12, 11. You get to take authority by the blood of the Lamb and the spirit of your testimony. Are you giving somebody your testimony at work? Are you crying out to God and saying, Lord, lead me in this next conversation. Help me turn the conversation towards you. Help me turn the, this is funny. Help me turn the conversation about weather towards you. Come on, we all start a conversation about the weather. I do it all the time. I'm guilty. Turn the conversation about the weather towards Jesus. And when the weather's bad, rebuke the storm like Jesus did in, in Mark chapter 4. I want to go to that today. Pull up Mark chapter 4, Brian. Mark chapter 4, starting with, with verse 35. On the, same day, on the same day when evening came, he sent them over. Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also following him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, and he rebuked the wind. And I want you to hold this verse up there, right? He rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Remember this, what Jesus spoke. He said, hey, guys, let's get in the boat, disciples, and let's go over. Let's go over to the other side. He spoke it out. His words were stronger than the storm that came. He said, we're going to end up on the other side. Even though the storm comes, we're speaking truth. And he said, we're going to be on that shoreline. And what he rebuked. He rebuked the wind because the enemy was in the wind. He, didn't, he told the waves to be still, but he didn't rebuke the water. He rebuked what was causing the storm. Did you hear me, church? He told the wind to be still. And when the wind became still, the, the waves quit crashing, the boat quit filling with water. I'm asking you here today, are you rebuking the enemy? Are you rebuking the wind in your life? Are you taking authority over your family and rebuking what the enemy's doing, telling the storm to stop, telling the wind to quit blowing so the waves don't fill your boat? Get this picture that, that the wind's blowing hard and that the storm's coming and the waves are crashing against the boat and they're trying to split the boat. They're trying to crack the boat. The enemy's wanting to stop the disciples and Jesus from getting to the other side. Sometimes in our life when we're sick, we need to rebuke the cancer. We need to rebuke what's the fear and the headache and the sickness. We need to rebuke it in the name of Jesus and take the authority so the storm has to calm when you have anxiety, speak to the anxiety and say, be anxious for nothing but everything through prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God. If you're anxious today, rebuke it. Talk to the storm. Jesus 
sent out with his disciples and it said that there was other little boats so other people wanted to follow jesus when you truly find jesus and you figure out who he is you're wanting to follow him all the time you're wanting to lead a life that that truly shows jesus in every moment when you know jesus truly there will be a constant following of him verse 36 other people were joining in in their boats church i don't think you heard what i said when you know Jesus truly, there will be a constant following of him. I was just talking to someone back there earlier about this, but when only a couple of my employees that are in and out, sometimes they come to church. I, only those two guys see me in both forms. They see me in the pulpit and they see me at work. And what do they think of Pastor Troy at work? Am I following Jesus? Am I consistent, Trent? Am I consistent at work? Am I following Jesus? Or am I saying things that I shouldn't? They should know Jesus without us speaking. Just by the way you love on people and care for people and don't condemn people. There should be a constant, continual following. And even though the ship was full of water, it didn't sink because Jesus' words to go to the other side were stronger than the storm. And he rebuked the wind and he spoke it out. Rebuke means a, an expression of sharp disapproval, not to agree with. Too often, too many times, we come in agreement with what the enemy's trying to do. We, we focus on that, that one negative problem in our life and we don't allow Jesus to step in and take over. We focus on the negative and, and not all the positives that God's doing around us in our life. I was reminded, not this winter, but when you have wet winters and there's a lot of snow, and Gustavo knows about this, you, you go out and you take a round hay bale and you're feeding the cows. And, and every path, every morning to, to that feed bunk, the tractor starts to sink in a little bit more and it becomes roots when it's really wet. And you fight to get to that feed bunk because the tractor ultimately sl always slides over in those deep roots and, and you can't get out. You're stuck in the same roots every morning. Let me ask you, church, is that the church? Are we stuck in the same way and the same feeding pattern every morning that we don't rebuke what's going on in our life? We don't rebuke the storm. We don't come against the enemy and go on a different path. We serve a God who wants to get you out of the same roots that you're always in. He wants to get you unstuck. He wants to change the way you think. He wants you to have the renewing of your mind. You cannot possibly go through this world successfully without having the renewing of your mind every day so you can attest and approve what God's good and perfect will is. I want to ask you today, are you excited about Jesus? Are you celebrating Jesus? Uh, do not let the things of the world and the things in the news destroy your heart. We serve a bigger God than anything that's going on. And I encourage you to take authority over your home and over your lives and over your jobs and over your government. Take authority. Psalms 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Set your mind on the things that are up here and not focus on the things that are straight in front of you every day. Listen, if you walk with your head down, you're never going to see Jesus. If you get your head stuck so far down that you're only focusing on your problems and you become what you focus on, church. You become what you focus on. But if you're focusing on the love of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, if you're asking for God's wisdom without a double mind, you're going to receive wisdom for what you're going through. We serve that kind of God. We serve a God who, who wants to save his people. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, Brian, starting with verse 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea to continue of the Gerdians. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately was met with him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. 
who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Even the demons in this man are worshiping Jesus. Even the demons in this man identify who God is. And, and it said he, that he ran out to meet Jesus because they feared him. They were begging, don't torment me before the time. Do you identify who Jesus is? Are you meeting Jesus at the shoreline when he's coming into your life? Are, are you accepting Jesus as he comes forward? And you, are you worshiping him? They knew who he was. Church religion has canceled out who Jesus is. Religion doesn't allow us to identify who Christ is. The, the structure of the church has, has became what man wants it to be inside the walls of the church. And we have to tear down the walls. Yes, the walls are here to keep us warm and outside when it's cold outside. I'm talking about the weather again. Listen. I was walking on the prayer trail this morning. And... Uh, my guys had had a stump grinder out there and we were grinding out the little roots and stumps because you'd trip on them as you walked and, and there were still holes where they had ground it out and, and I took my foot and I started to rub the dirt back in the hole as I was praying and walking and I go, all of a sudden I felt God just, he was talking to me, he said, Troy, it's the Sabbath. And I said, yeah, Lord, Lord, it is. And if the Pharisees were here, here today, they would be ridiculing me for taking my foot, moving that dirt over in the hole. And God said, you're not under that law. God said, use common sense because the person coming behind you might trip and fall. Cover up the hole, Troy. Far too long do we wait to cover up the hole and help somebody else out. We're too worried about making a mistake so we won't step into what God wants us to do. Do you see what religion does? Religion is all about works. I'm here to tell you today that there's a lot of good people that done a lot of good works and they're in hell. Ouch. We only speak the truth. But the people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior are going to fill the kingdom. The people who love Jesus with all their heart are going to be in the kingdom. This past week we've seen funerals and we've lost loved ones but the Lord led in the last two funerals to have an altar call and to pray with the family to receive Jesus Christ in the middle of a funeral are you taking the opportunity to listen to the power of the Holy Spirit and win lives and cover up the holes in their lives so people quit tripping in religion the enemy wants to take us over with his religion and how many times you kneel and how many times you stand and are you doing this right and are you doing that right? Well, when are they going to mention about loving Jesus? When are they going to mention about our Savior? You guys, when you hit the streets of this world, you've got to speak the truth of the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the cross and the resurrection of the dead. Can I get an Amen. Our God is, is so powerful and so loving and so kind. Mark chapter 5, where was I at there, Brian? Mark chapter 5, verse, verse 8. For he said to him, come, come out of the man, the unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered him saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. 
And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Think about it. Did you guys know that pigs can swim a little bit? I've raised plenty of pigs in 4-H. They can cause a whole lot of problems real fast. The demons were asking Jesus, and Jesus didn't have to give in. He wasn't obeying their orders. But what the demons were trying to do is say, Jesus, we know that you have all power over us and that you can send us back to the abyss right now. But they didn't know that the pigs were going to go over the cliff. Jesus sent them in the, into the pigs to show the picture of the uncleanliness. And as they came over the cliff, they drowned. And as you look forward in Scripture, you're wondering, there, there, this was a large herd, it said, and, and you think of the farmers that own the pigs and you start to feel sorry for them that they just lost their whole crop, their whole harvest. But you know they didn't come at Jesus. They feared him. They wanted him to leave town. My guess is, is that they weren't followers of God. They didn't want to care about Jesus. They were about more about prosperity than they were about the Savior who's standing right in front of them. They allowed their prosperity and the loss of the pigs to blind their eyes about who Jesus truly is and was. Are we allowing our things of the world and our prosperity to drown out who Jesus really is? Are we about ready to go over the edge of the cliff because we don't see who Jesus is? The miraculous is happening here. There, there's some greater picture that's about to happen. Pull up the next verse, Brian. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told him in the city and in the country, and they went out to see it was that had happened, what had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and saw this about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he had got in the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him because he said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had compassion on you did you catch this that man feared and he said Jesus please take me with you please take me with you I don't want the demons to come back please take me with you and Jesus is saying by your testimony and by the blood of the lamb you'll be saved and you rebuke the enemy but there's one greater story in all of this the storm was out on the water. The storm was out on the water and Satan was trying to stop the boat from getting to the shore because the evangelist was on the shoreline. The evangelist was on the shoreline and when, when Jesus cast out the demons, he said, you go and tell everybody. Satan's trying to stop the evangelism. Satan's trying to allow things to come into your life that stop you from being the evangelist. And I'm here to tell you today that if he can cast out a legion of demons and send that man in on his behalf to tell the story in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then he can use you too. Amen? There are things in your life that you think that God can't forgive you and use you. That's hogwash. That kind of goes along with the pigs going over the cliff. <laughs> but it's hogwash. We, you guys, there's no way the pastors can reach everybody. There's no way Jamie Montero can reach everybody by himself. And I know there's more than Jamie. But we all got to team up. 
we all got to work together. And, and Jesus is, is, is standing around people, the Samaritan woman at the well. He has a conversation with her and he sets her free. And the disciples are already judging, wondering why would they be talking to why would he be talking to a Samaritan woman? And Jesus sends the evangelist back into town. He sends the adulterous woman back into town. The woman with five husbands, he sends, sends her back into town to tell about Jesus. Don't ever disqualify yourself. Because you're saved through the blood of the Lamb and through your testimony. Thank you, God. Once Jesus Christ truly gets a hold of you and you worship him and you ask him into your heart, you ask him into your life, you ask him to forgive your sins, you start this process of walking with him. You start this process and he gives you a new identity. In the book of Genesis, Joseph's identity was, was stripped from him by his very brothers. And, and they took the, the tunic, the robe that he wore that was prestigious and, and declared his identity and his status, who he was, and, and they took it back to their dad, dipped in goat's blood, and said, he's, he's been slain, that a lion got him. And then Joseph was hauled off to Egypt. But all that time, God had a plan in his life. And he gave him a new robe and a new crown and a new signet ring and a new identity. And then he prospered him and he changed the lives of many people. And then he brought his family back. I'm here to tell you today that if you have family members you're still praying for, if you have family members that have offended you, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. Forgive them and keep praying for them because God's going to bring them back around and he's going to line them up in your life and you're going to be that witness and that testimony that they need to hear. Don't hold grudges. They're not worth it. Don't put a label on somebody in your family. You reach out. I don't care if it's your mother, your father, your sister, brother, your grandparents. I don't care who it is. It's not your right to continue not to forgive them. God's wanting to line everything up in your life to humble you and mold you and make you because the evangelist is on the shoreline and he's wanting to send you out. He's wanting to send you out. There's, there's, if Jesus can, can do that and, and cast out demons, which he did, that he can fix your family and when he works on those things in your life, then he sends you out according to Matthew 28, 19 through 20, the Great Commission to the, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I remember where I was sitting when God told me that. I was in Grace Church 20 years ago. And you know what I got held up on? Here's what religion does. Well, Lord, I, you're telling me to go out and make disciples, but, but you said to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I'm not a preacher, so I can't do that. Was that stupid or what? But that's what I'd been taught. I remember having that thought. God equips those who he calls. And he's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't love me more than you. I'm here to tell you today that if, if, if someone's in your life and, and Buzz, you just did this, if someone's in your life and they've accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and they want to be baptized, then get in the water with them. Get in the water with them. The same spirit that lives in me lives in all of you. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism is just an outward expression of your faith in Jesus Christ. And, and when you go down in the water, it resembles the washing away the old and coming up into the new. The evangelist was on the shoreline. The evangelist was on the shoreline, and Jesus was about ready to change everything in that man's life. And, and it also said that they clothed him. They gave him a new identity, and they clothed him. 
And immediately with him walking into town, the people would say, well, isn't this the man that broke chains that could, we chained up and he was out at the tombs and no one could talk to him? Without even speaking, he, they knew that a miracle had happened in that man's life. What miracle is God choosing to do in your life? Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, the first time that Mary Magdalene really is mentioned and comes on the scene. She was more than, than an evangelist. She was known as a caretaker. God, when she followed Jesus, Jesus changed her life, and, and she was the one who anointed Jesus' feet and got him ready for burial. Jesus chooses the least among us to do miracles. I'm here to tell you today that he's not going to use anybody to perform miracles that draws attention to themselves. Are you ready for the outpouring that's coming? Are you ready to see the miracles of Jesus Christ that are here and going to enlarge? It says, in those days, old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions. The power of the Holy Spirit is wanting to move and be in your life and perform miracles through your hands and through your prayers and through your lives amongst the people. But the church, the church, the religious church keeps saying that it can't happen. Anytime you hear a miracle story, the first thing that happens in most Christians' life is disbelief. Was that true? Did that really happen? Holy smokes. Why do we do that? I'm here to tell you today that I've been blessed with seeing people come forward and receive Christ as their Savior. That's always an awesome miracle because it's a life changed. That should be the first thing that happens. But I've seen God instantly heal my life. I've seen God save my wife's life when there was no answer from the doctor 15 years ago. I've seen it. And I saw the person that walked up to my wife and said, you're healed. It's no longer going to be on you anymore. Oh, is there prophets today? Good grief, people. Have you read your Bible? Paul said, I wish you all prayed and spoke in tongues as much as I did, but it's better that you prophesy. Oh, throw that part out because we don't understand that. We're religious. We're religious. You guys, if God tells you to text someone a word of encouragement, then send it to them. And if God tells you to lay hands on somebody and he gives you the power of the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues, then you pray in tongues. And if you don't have that gift, you still pray. I will never, ever, ever exclude anybody in this church from praying on somebody because they don't speak in tongues. That's not right. Because I've seen people pray with the power of the Holy Spirit in them. I believe everybody can have that gift. I believe that it's available. And is it powerful? Amen. It's powerful. According to Romans 8, 26. It's powerful. But we got to quit excluding people from, from helping in the church. We've got to quit excluding people and saying you're not good enough because the world does a pretty darn good job of that. Now, is there criteria that you must follow? Yes, you need to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Your life should resemble the love of Jesus Christ, or you're not going to be up here praying over people. Because we all have gifts that we can impart to one another. And I encourage you to use the gifts that God's given you. Some of that's in the kitchen. And boy, do I like the women that cook in the kitchen. Man. That's a gift. Somebody has to feed the people. And that was fun yesterday when Carol, I saw her here earlier. We, we had Carol's uh, going away party. Where should I see Ken? Oh, there's Carol over there. There was a lot of good eating there, but there was better fellowship. There was better fellowship. And you know what yesterday told me? 
that Carol touched all of our lives in some way or we wouldn't have been there. She, she wasn't about us coming there. She touched our lives in some way, so we were there. A lot of times at a, at a funeral, when, you, when I open up in greeting, I, I always tell the people, the mere fact that you're here today shows me that that person had an impact on your life in some way. In some way. What kind of impact are we having on, on the people around us? What kind of words are we withholding? Sometimes, sometimes we do miss it. But I'm here to tell you today that when, when you come beside one another, when you pray with one another, when you have fellowship one, with one another, you share the gifts that God's giving you with one another, the church becomes powerful, and that's when we go out there and we evangelize. That's when we go out there and find new evangelists. That's when we go out there and make a difference and win people to Christ. That's when sick people are healed, the, the lame walk, the blind see, and the mute speak. We've got to be ready to move. But in knowing that, the, the enemy was causing disruption this morning a little bit up here, wasn't he? No, no let's just talk about it for a minute because we, we love the, our worship team. They do an awesome job, amen? Can I get a clap for them? But little glitches with the sound system, right, Steve? Just some static and some different things going on. We all. But the enemy didn't want us to worship. It wasn't about that they weren't capable or they don't have a great voice. You, you guys have all heard Kyle sing. We know he can sing. But Kyle's got to take authority in Jesus' name, rebuke the wind. Carrie, we know you can sing. Logan, we know you can play the guitar. Krista, we know you can sing. But we have to stand up in the fight and not quit fighting. Because the enemy doesn't want that beautiful sound, and, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It, what I always say is that honoring God to his very throne room. And are we bringing down the power of the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to move in this service and how he chooses? Church isn't about what it can do for us. It's about how we worship God. What can we do to honor God today? Jesus rebuked the storm. It's not a coincidence that the storm tried to show up today. The winds tried to continue to blow. But we kept playing and we kept singing and we kept preaching and we kept pouring out and we kept receiving and we kept speaking the things that God told us to speak. And we take the power and authority and know that by the blood of the Lamb and by our testimony, we are saved and others will be saved. Amen? Speak truth at all times. Kyle, it's going to happen. I don't know where he's sending us, Kyle, but we're going. Don't quit praying about that. Because there's people that are dying without Christ. There's people that are dying without Christ. And we have to be willing and available to speak in Portuguese if that's what it takes. I got three people here that can do that. God's going to send people that speak their language so that they can understand. He's not going to leave anybody out. I, I, I want, Marcel, I'm praying about this. I want to preach in Brazil someday. But you're going to have to go. You two are going to have to go with me because I can't speak Portuguese. Otherwise, I'm going to have to ask Marcia if you're not going to go. She's going in September. I'm going with her. Somebody's got to be there to interpret. The point is, is that, that Jesus is building evangelists all around us. He's building apostles and pastors and preachers and teachers. And we have to be willing to be set 
free of the junk. I think that's the point of a lot of the message today is if you allow Jesus Christ to come into your life and start to clean it up, he'll start to use you and you'll pour out his spirit to other people because he lives in you. Jesus is wanting to cleanse the temple. He's wanting to, he's already made our wrongs right. And when you go to him, he's paid the debt. And nothing that you have to say to him or ask him is too big for him to do. Worship team, will you come forward? Nothing is too big for him. So allow him to to cast out the demons in your life. Allow him to cast out the anxiety and the fear and the depression. Allow him to cast those things out. Jesus didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. He gave us a sound mind for the long haul. He gave us a sound mind to cross to the other side of the beach, to the shore. Allow God's spirit to touch you and to move in your life today so he can use you. This time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation we believe, we believe in this broken generation when all is dark help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that it conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back again. We believe. Let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe We believe Coming 
the Holy Spirit and He's giving us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He's conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and He's coming back. He's coming back again. Amen. Do you see what happens when you're truthful and you speak it out? Was that not beautiful? That's not an easy song to sing. Give them a clap. Praise in the house. I love you guys. You, you, you don't quit when things aren't quite right. You don't quit when things aren't quite right. I prayed for three weeks now that God would give me my want to back, and he has. Don't let the enemy take your want to. This is becoming bigger, Kyle. This is becoming bigger, Kyle. This is becoming bigger, Kyle. Amen. I prayed about it, just just doing uh, more music, and uh, and I think the same day I prayed, Lo Logan sent me a text said, "Hey, when you want to get together and, and, and write some music," mm -hmm. and uh, it it just falls into place. Um, what what Carrie, what Krista, what Virginia do up here? I mean, they just make it easy. I woke up saying, oh, "I'm going to my happy place." When I get here, Carrie goes, "Hey, you're here. I'm in my happy place." Amen. You know, I, I don't believe in coincidence anymore. No. There's no such thing. I mean, I, I pray about it. Logan answers that text. I didn't text Logan. I didn't. I hadn't talked to him mm. probably weeks. He's been a busy guy. But we get together and and just God performs a miracle. We wrote a song based on a on one of your sermons the other day. You talked about the thief on the cross, mm. and you know we tried to write music this time instead of our words. We tried the music first, and uh, it's just flowing. Man, it's it's magical. It's, it's really fun. I'm going to Kyle. Yeah. God told me that his Sunday mornings would be bigger than his Friday nights. Amen. He feeds his family on Friday nights, but his Sunday morning is bigger. Father, I thank you for Kyle's life. I thank you for this whole worship team, Father God. Come here, Krista. I thank you, God. We're a team. There's not, not one individual. Father God, I thank you for worshiping to your very throne room today. I thank you, Father God, that, that your worship is becoming stronger and powerful in all of us, God, and that you've chosen these people to lead. And I, I know there's many more, God. I don't want to leave anyone out. There's a lot of singers that aren't up here today. So cover each one of them, Father God. But Lord, I pray that you continue to move in Kyle's heart, Father God. I pray that, that there's more songs coming that he's writing, Father God. I pray you'll surround him with the right people to move him forward, God, in anything that you have us to do, Father. So prepare his heart, prepare his mind, and, and let the power of the Holy Spirit just baptize him now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. It's becoming greater. I, w I want Marcella, I want you to come here and Buzz and Cliff Ann, come here Carrie, I want you to come right here for a minute stay. I want you to stand and, and hold your hands up towards the people yeah. yeah yeah yeah. here it is praise be your name Lord, we just want to worship you we just want to surrender before your feet. 
I want to share something very quickly with you because Jesus, he asked us in the book of Mark chapter 14, he told something very special and very simple. I keep telling you how Jesus is simple. And uh, he told that everywhere where, where, where we preach the gospel, we should tell a story about a woman worshiping him, breaking the vase in him in his head and pouring out the, par the perfume. So Jesus didn't ask us to preach about Moses. Jesus didn't ask us to preach about David. Jesus didn't ask us to preach. Yes, of course we need, but he asked, make sure that everywhere where you preach the gospel, you're going to remember, you're going to remind people about that woman who poured out that perfume, that precious perfume. So that's why, Pastor Troy, it's telling you before the church that worship is so important. Because it is. Worship is so important before Jesus. And he's asking us, please, just find a way to worship Jesus. Just find a way to surrender your, your souls before Jesus. Because when we worship Jesus, we're going to find rest. We're going to find glory. Uh, his glory will come upon us and we will be healed we will be delivered so just worship Jesus just remember that woman that put out that perfume before Jesus and just worship him in your simple way because he's waiting for you to worship him hallelujah so I want everybody just hold your hands out like this to receive I want you to receive so, Father God, I, I just pray in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon your people, that you would impart greater things into them, Father God. You give freely, Father God. So I'm asking you now to, to bless your people, not by anything that I'm doing, God, but by you, Jesus. You said your spirit you left with us. So allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work in each person's life here now. You give that to him, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus.